Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is name. N-A-M-E. Really? You bet your life. It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, a comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers, the dealers who now have on display the all-new 1954 Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field, and who on November 5th will have on display the astonishing and beautiful new DeSoto for 1954. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Are you sure you want him? Oh, that's me. Well, here I am again with 1,500 smackolas for one of our couples. Well, Groucho, I um, saw an interesting article in the newspaper about a married couple, and I told them to come and see us next time they were in Hollywood, and maybe they'd get on the show. And they did, and here they are, Mr. and Mrs. John Peter Fedorovich. Would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Well, how do you do? Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. <laughs> Say the secret word, and you'll take home an extra hundred uh, smackolas. The secret word is a very common word, and it's something you always have with you, I presume. Mr. and Mrs. John Peter Fedorovich, huh? That's right. Where are you from, uh, Mr. Fedorovich? I was born in Rotten, Poland. I've been here over 40 years. You were born in Rotten, Poland? Or a hot in Poland. What kind of a place is Rotten, Poland? Uh, I don't know, a long time since I've been there. Since How I old were you when you uh, fled from there? Sixty. You were no, sixty I'm when you 60 left now. there? You are sixty? Gee, you don't know. Yeah. What sort of work do you do? I'm a roofer. Well, top of the morning to you. <laughs> what does a roofer do? Fixes the roofs. <laughs> well, I, I didn't think you raised caterpillars, but I... Uh, <laughs> Uh, what do you do specifically, then? Well, it depends on the type of roof. Uh-huh. Well, let's see. You're, you're Mrs. Uh, Fedorovich, huh? That's right. F- F- Fedorovich. Is that the word? How do you pronounce it? Fedorovich. Fedorovich, huh? That's right. Well, that's a whole lot better. Huh? <laughs> what is your... <laughs> Helen? Mm-hmm. Oh, do you mind if I call you Helen? That's all right. What part of Poland are you from, Helen? I'm not from Poland. I was born in the United States. I was born in Hobart, Oklahoma. Well, Hel- uh, Helen, uh, you're, you're pretty short for a tall girl. How tall are you? <laughs> well, I'm just a little over five feet tall, and I weigh 155 pounds. Oh, you're kind of five by five, huh? <laughs> well, you carry it well. How much do you weigh, John? I weigh 125. <laughs> Did she weigh more than you when you got well, married? She weighed about 100 pounds more when I met her. I beg your pardon? She weighed about 100 pounds more when I met her. She weighed 100 pounds more than she does now when you married her? Than I did. Than you did. And you weigh 125 and she yes, weighed 225? Yes. Helen, after you were married, did you try to lose a little excess baggage? Yes, I did. And John thought it'd be a good idea if we take a walk. Did he suggest it, that you lose some weight? He suggested that we walk. Is that true, John? That's right. Well, how did you do this? Did you lie down on the floor no. and let him walk all over you? No. We took a walk to Arizona. You took a walk to Arizona? How far did you walk on this Arizona stroll? About 500 miles. Well, Helen, did this walking uh, trip to Arizona have any effect on you? I lost 50 pounds. Did this make you happy, John? No, but she gained 60 later on. Well, John, did you try any other reducing measures like walking to Shreveport? Uh... No, we didn't walk to Shreveport, but we went to we walked to Spokane, Washington. You you walked to Spokane? That's right. Well, how far is that as the crow flies? We didn't uh, fly; we walked. About five miles. <laughs> well, look at some—he keeps topping me. I guess that's that's because he was a roofer. <laughs> How did you make out on the Spokane trip, Helen? Did you did you lose any uh, any blubber, any weight? <laughs> I lost about eighty five pounds. Okay, I'm ready for the next question. John, how much did she gain? Well, she gained uh, one hundred fifteen pounds. This could be I serious. Two hundred and sixty five. Huh? <laughs> Where'd you go this time, Alaska? No, we went down to Morongo, Imperial Valley, Mexico. 
Mexico up in San Diego. Get to Los Angeles. She didn't lose enough. She we went to take a walk down to Fresno or, or to the coast. <laughs> <laughs> We walked all together about 2,000 miles in four months. And uh, you say, how much do you weigh now? 155. Oh, well, are you satisfied with her? Oh, yeah, yeah. Huh? sure. I can lift her now before I couldn't buzz her. <laughs> did any, you mean you, you did this whole thing just so you could lift her? That's right. And so she feel better and look like something. Oh. <laughs> well, I think she looks pretty cute. Now she does. Yeah, I see her before. <laughs> The next time she puts on 100 pounds, bring her around, will you? <laughs> well, this has been a pretty heavy conversation we've had here, but uh, you can lighten your load by winning a lot of money, and I hope you do. All you got to do is run your $20 <coughs> more than our other couples, and you get a chance at the big question. These are all French words and expressions that we have adopted for cooking and serving foods. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you bet? 20? You don't consult this with Skinny here at all, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what about it, Slats? Are you in a... Better go ahead and do what she wants. All right, you're going to bet $20. What is the French word that means a small cup of coffee taken at the close of a meal? Demetas. Right. Well, you're on your way. You have $40. All right, how much of the 40 are you going to bet in your second question? All of it. You ignore him completely. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> what are the small cubes of toasted bread served with soup called? Croutons. That's right, croutons. You now have $80. Did you carry a menu on this trip you took to Phoenix, Seattle? No, no. Here's your third question. You have 80 bucks. How much are you going to bet? All of it. Slices of bone meat or fish are called what? Filet. Filet is right. <laughs> You now have $160. I always thought Phil A was in Pennsylvania. Now, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much will you bet? All of it. All of it, huh? Whites of eggs whipped to a standing froth with sugar is called what? Meringue. Meringue is right. And you wind up with $320. Well, that's a good luck to the Minnesota Plymouth Dealer. Fenneman, everybody's talking big, bright, and beautiful these days. Let's listen in. It's big, the 54 Fenneman. It's bright, the 54 Fenneman. Big, bright, beautiful too. The 54 Plymouth is the car for you. Yes, the new 54 Plymouth, big, bright, and beautiful, is the car for you. The car that's got everybody talking about its new beauty. I've never seen such luxurious fabrics and appointments before in any low-priced car. So many smart new ideas in detail and color combinations. Plymouth's high-style interiors certainly live up to their name. Power steering's available this year. Plymouth's full-time power steering. Does 80% of the work for you, getting in and out of tight parking places. And always lets you keep the feel of the road for good, steady handling. And there are three great drives available, including Plymouth High Drive that gets you where you're going without shifting. See this great new beauty for yourself. Visit a DeSoto Plymouth dealer for all the exciting details on the beautiful new 54 Plymouth. Big, bright, beautiful too. The 54 Plymouth is the car for you. All right, George, who's next? Well, we invited some uh, plumbers to the show tonight, Gacho. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mr. Michael Moran. His partner is Miss Regula Thorsten. So, folks, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word. Say, plumbers always get applause here. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mr. Michael Moran, that's that you? Yes, sir, that's You have a sister named Lemon? <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> Not that I know of. Oh, I used to know a Lemon Moran. She lived in, a, in the automat in New York. <laughs> Where are you from, Mike? I was born in Huntington, Oregon, but raised in Los Angeles. Raised in Los Angeles. Are you married? Yes, sir. How old are you? Thirty-one. Regular Thorson, that's you? That's right. That's an interesting name, Regular. Where'd you get it? <clears throat> I was named after the city saint in Zurich, Switzerland. You 
said name. That's the secret word. So you get 50 smackers. Well, and uh, the you, plunger Dr. over here gets $50. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Now, uh, uh, what were you saying about uh, you were named after a, a plumber named Lemma Moran at the <laughs> Auto Man in New York? Dr. Dr. you got it all wrong. I was oh. named after a city saint. A city saint? Yeah, that's right, in Zurich, Switzerland. You come from Switzerland? I surely do. Mm-hmm. I did, at least. Uh-huh. How long ago? Oh, well, now, Groucho, you wouldn't ask me embarrassing questions. Yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way I make a living, yeah? <laughs> now, uh, how did you get the name? Uh, you were named after a city saint? That's right. How long ago was this? Oh, many years ago. How long ago? In this century. In this century. <laughs> At the turn of the century? A little later. Oh. Why did you come to this country, regular? Oh. Just to outwit me? <laughs> <laughs> no. You succeeded in so far. <laughs> no. I, uh, you see, I trained as a nurse in the American hospital in Paris. And my superintendent of nurses thought that I would make a much better career in the States, and that's why I came. Uh, have you had any exciting experiences as a nurse in this country? I certainly have. One of, way, yeah? Well, one of them was uh, taking care of you. You once were my patient. I knew that past of mine would catch up with me. <laughs> well, what happened? Did I did I emerge alive? Uh, you certainly did. I did, huh? Yes. <clears throat> you used to come to uh, this doctor's office quite regularly, and after a few visits, one time, you impersonated your own brother. And you did it so convincingly that you had me completely sold. So I almost got fired. But that isn't all. Two weeks I later... <laughs> two weeks later, you sent your brother into the doctor's office, and you had your brother impersonate you. And to make matters even more complicated, you know what the doctor's name was? No. Dr. Marx. Really? And that isn't Rudolph all. Marx? Rudolf Marx. Oh, and yeah. that isn't all. He's a nice guy, Rudolph. Isn't he, though? I want to say, after you left that doctor's office, I impersonated Rudolf Marx. I didn't know. <laughs> But that isn't all. It was on Wednesday. It was his day off, and he didn't. They don't come in on Wednesday. (laughs) You know, doctors don't work on Wednesday at all. Wednesday, Friday afternoon, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want to die, you got to do it Monday, Tuesday, (laughs) Thursday. You know, speaking of hospitals, it reminds me of the story about Mark Connolly. He wrote. He's a famous playwright. He wrote Green Pastures and many other plays. Anyway, he had gone to Cedars of Lebanon to visit a friend there who had had a tonsillectomy. And he got in the elevator there at Cedars. And the elevator operator says, what floor? And, and he said, men's tonsils, please. And, <laughs> that's a true story, isn't it? Uh, are you still at that uh, same hospital regular? No, I'm not. I've quit the nursing profession. They always do that after they get me. Uh. <laughs> Mike, who do you work for? Uh, Sicking Plumbing. Is yes. it a big outfit? One of the largest in town, Groucho. We have about 40 plumbers on tap. 40 plumbers on tap. Say, that's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> you know any roofing jokes? No, sir. I don't. Is that one of the little jokes you plumbers use in the trade? Well, you might call it that. Mm-hmm. And this, for this, you charge five and a half an hour? No, not for the jokes. Have you ever had any unusual experiences, a plumber, like fixing a leaky faucet in less than eight hours? <laughs> Yes, uh, I was fixing garbage disposal one time when I'm, I had to take the garbage disposal out of the sink to, to repair it. And in order Is that why they call it the Sinking Brothers? <laughs> no. And in order to remount it, I had to lay on my back under the sink and put the spud through the hole in the sink, which is just actually uh, like a big donut. So I'm laying there tightening the screws up, looking right up through the sink, and this housewife comes walking over me and turns the water on. <laughs> right my face. And she said, she, she said, I didn't think it would run on you. I said, well, you think it's going to run up? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you got a bath out of it, didn't you? <laughs> You're lucky she didn't drop any garbage down there. <laughs> well, it's been very interesting talking to you two. I haven't learned anything, but it's been interesting. <laughs> and the next time you come to my house, charge me four dollars an hour, will you? Well, now you're gonna you're gonna work in the quiz. Now let's see how you make out. We'll see how smart you really are. All you got to do is run your twenty dollars in the more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the big money later.
In the race for the $1,500, the first couple won $320, and the secret word is name. Uh, let's see how high I can bid you $20. You selected instruments in common use as your category. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's right. Most of us have seen or heard of these instruments. Now, these are not plumber's tools, you know. No. <laughs> now, let's see if you can identify them. You have $20. How much are you going to bet? I think you should bet uh, 19 Talk real loud now. $19.98. Okay. No, we didn't hear a word. Uh, you said. Right. 1998. 1998. Sounds like Macy's basement. Yes, it does. <laughs> Have you ever thought of quitting plumbing and going into uh, going into show business? Uh, no, sir. Everybody's in show business now. You can get yourself a panel show in no time. <laughs> what is the instrument used by doctors to determine the heartbeat? The stethoscope. That's right. That's a step. You have thirty-nine dollars and ninety-eight cents now. Uh, what does that remind you of? Uh, Can't think of anything. I'm concentrating right now. Yeah. Uh, what is the? How much are you betting? It's just all but two cents. So it'd be thirty-nine eighty-six. Uh, Ninety-six. 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 Yeah. What is the surveying instrument called that is used to measure angles? It is mounted on a tripod. What is the surveying instrument called that is used to measure angles? It is mounted on a tripod. Datum isn't correct. Datum is the only one I can think of it. Datum. One inch. Is that what you decide on? Yes, sir. You were. I know it too, but I can't think of it. (laughs) Transit. 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 That's a shame. Just used it the other day. (laughs) You now have two cents. Wow. (laughs) How much of the two cents are you going to bet? Go for broke. Go for for broke. What is the instrument used for marking exact time in music? Um, I know it's 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 metronome. (laughs) metronome. Well, Well, now you have nothing. All gone. All gone. Now I give you one more question. You get this right, and you spend twenty-five bucks. A popular figure of early American history was Martha Washington. What was her husband's name? George. <laughs> George Washington. Absolutely right, George Washington. Thanks Thank you, George. Thank you. Thanks and good luck in the DeSoto Plymouth deal. And now, Groucho, our next contestant is N.C. Byer, a waiter. Mr. N.C. Byer, a waiter, eh? What's the N.C. stand for? It stands for New Car, Groucho. Your name is New Car Byer? Well, you've certainly come to the right show. Where are you a waiter? Oh, I can wait anywhere, Groucho. I thought I'd wait right here in the studio. It's not too personal. What are you waiting for? For November 5th, Groucho. All of us new car buyers are waiting for November 5th because that's the day the wonderful new DeSoto goes on display for the very first time. Yes, I know. They say that this outstanding new DeSoto is the most wonderful car ever built, with so many new engineering features that you'll have to drive it to believe it, and with an outstanding new beauty and style that will put it years ahead of all the others. Yes, I know. So that's what I'm waiting for, November 5th, the day this magnificent new DeSoto for 1954 makes its very first appearance. You see, folks, you got to be careful. You never know when we're going to bring in a commercial to remind you that November 5th is the big day. Your first chance to see the stunning DeSoto for 1954. Okay, George, who's next? Well, Groucho, we have a a young married couple for you now, Mr. and Mrs. Edward Shefflin. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome. Welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word, and you'll take home an extra $100. It's a common word, <laughs> something you always have with you. Mr. What are you calling him? Fenneman, what are you calling him Mr. for? This man's a general. Uh, are you a general? <laughs> no, Groucho. I'm a master sergeant in the Air Force. Oh. How, how old are you, uh, Sergeant? 33. 33, huh? Well, you're a fine-looking lad. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Shefflin. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't want to call you Mrs. Shefflin. That's... Uh, too dignified for me. Wait, can you call me Margaret? Uh, well, I could try. <laughs> Margaret, I notice you're holding pretty tight to your husband there. Uh, do, do you feel all right? Oh, I'm feeling fine, thank you. Oh. But um, I sometimes hold on to him this way when we're walking around because my left leg is paralyzed. I had polio in 1942. 
Oh, is that so? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry to hear that. Wait, would oh, you like sorry. to sit down? Now? Oh, no, thank I'd really huh? rather stand. You would? Yeah. I sit down watching one thing or another all day. And... Oh. Mm-hmm. I'd rather sit down myself. I didn't know how you felt. <laughs> well, are you sure you won't be too tired? Huh? No, I'll be fine. Does your polio seem to be getting better as time goes by? Well, it's a gradual process, yeah. but uh, it's been getting better, and strangely enough, having a baby seems to help. How old is your baby? Well, we have four little girls, but the youngest one is five weeks. You say these four children helped your health, eh? Well, it seems to have, anyway. That's odd. Uh, I've been a father three times, and look at me, eh? (laughs) Next time, I think I'll try being a mother. (laughs) Who takes care of the four kids, Margaret? Do you have help? No, I I take care of them in the house. Oh, I I don't feel I have a real handicap, because I can play ping pong and swim and do lots of things. Well, you certainly have a lot of courage, Margaret. Well, Next time I get a little ache or pain, I, I don't think I'll complain quite so much. <laughs> maybe the little ones are bad, too. Uh, I had a headache the other day, and I sent for an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out some more about you two. For example, what was there about Margaret that prompted you to uh, pop the question? Well, I thought she was very nice-looking, and she was a good conversationalist, and pleasant, courteous, and above all, she was very smart. You mean by trapping you, she was smart? <laughs> well, okay. she, can, she can read a book in, say, less than an hour, and she can tell you everything that she's read. Well, can't she cook? <laughs> she can do anything. You're pretty proud of her, aren't you, huh? Oh, that I, said, I am. And I certainly don't blame you, Sergeant. You think she'll win a lot, uh, win a lot of money for you here tonight? Oh, it's just as good as money in a bank. <laughs> Why, what makes you think she's going to walk away with the loot here tonight? Well, she used to be a quiz kid for about three years. A quiz kid? <laughs> Jumping butterballs were wiped out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Is this true, Margaret? Are you really a, a former quiz kid? Yeah, I was a quiz kid from... Uh, for 19- Kelly? Joe Kelly. Mm-hmm. Joe Kelly. Uh-huh. Yeah, and he's still on. Is that so? uh-huh. I've gotten too old. See, when you're, uh, when you're 16, they figure you're not a kid anymore. Yeah. So I was on from 42 to 44. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Well, Ed, doesn't it uh, sometimes annoy you that your wife knows all the answers? Well, Groucho, it, it sometimes scares me. <laughs> now, don't worry about her knowing the answers, old boy. The time to get scared is when she starts asking the questions. <laughs> okay. Well, obviously, you're a happily married couple, and I'm sure everyone is anxious to see you slaughter me in the quiz. <laughs> so let's, let's see what you can do. You have to run your $20 and more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the big money. In the race for the $1,500, Mr. and Mrs. Fedorowitz are leading with $320. You selected what's the number? This is a test of your powers of observation. Let's see if you can correctly identify the amount or number. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? 20 Sure. All of it? All of it. All of it. How many strings on a standard violin? Four. Four is right. You now have $40. Uh, you have $40. Now, how much are you going to bet on this one? Shoot two works. On a standard telephone dial, how many holes are there? Okay, you tell me. Ten. Ten is correct. Okay. <laughs> you now have eighty dollars. She's the quiz kid, but I know she's slipping you the hard ones here. Huh? <laughs> Here's your third question. How much of the eighty are you going to bet? Eighty. We'll bet the eighty. How many rows of keys are there on a standard typewriter? Four. Four. Four is right. <laughs> You now have $160. Here's your last chance to be the other couples. You have $160. How much are you going to risk? All of it. We'll all. all of it. We'll How many it. cigarettes are there in a standard pack? Twenty. Twenty is right, huh? <laughs> and you wind up with $320. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Prima Dealers. Thank you. Yeah. 
And that means that the first couple, Mr. and Mrs. Federovitz, and Sergeant Shefflin and his wife, both with $320, have tied for the chance at the big $1,500 question. Groucho, do you realize it will be here November 5th? I didn't even know it had been away. What are you talking about? Well, the day is Thursday, November 5th. Certainly, and that's the day the magnificent 1954 DeSoto goes on display for the very first time. That's right. Thursday, November 5th, is D-Day. D for the stunning new DeSoto for 1954. (laughs) I knew it all the time. Well, then why did you ask me what I was talking about? Well, for some reason, I thought you were thinking about a gorgeous blonde. Well, why should I be thinking about a gorgeous blonde when I can remind the folks that November 5th is their first chance to see the dramatic new DeSoto for 1954? Fenneman, I shall treat that question with the contempt it so richly deserves. Folks, go to your nearest DeSoto Plymouth dealers on November 5th and see the wonderful new DeSoto for 1954. And if you run across that blonde, tell her Groucho sent you. Well, Groucho, here are the two couples tied for the chance at the big question. Mr. and Mrs. John Peter Fedorovich, Mr. and Mrs. Edward Shefflin. Each couple will decide on a single answer and write it down on a little piece of paper we've given them. If both couples get it right, they'll split the money between them. We all set? Fifteen seconds. Yes, okay. One of the colorful figures of the gay 90s was a former newsboy who on July 23rd, 1886, allegedly jumped off the Brooklyn Bridge and survived. For $1,500, what was his name? Nothing? You wouldn't even write anything? I didn't remember. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Fedorovich, huh? The gentleman over here is right. It's Steve Brody. Oh, sure. Well, I'm sorry you didn't all win, but uh, that's the way it goes. Uh, how much did they win in the quiz, George? Well, they all won $320 in the quiz, and... Uh, well, you won $1,820. Congratulations. From the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast, you bet your life. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't forget Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Remember that the dealers who sell the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field, will have the magnificent new 1954 DeSoto on display November 5th. DeSoto, DeSoto, Plymouth. Two great new cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sends you. Good night, folks, and remember... Just be sure to see the distinguished new DeSoto. Friends, tonight your DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast salute the National Safety Congress, which is celebrating its 41st anniversary. DeSoto is proud of the part it has played in making America highway safety conscious. Remember, the life you save may be your own. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith, music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off with more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world.